everyone, it's Maria with Angelfish Design and welcome back to my channel. Today I have the second part of my Mermaid Traveler's Notebook journal slash planner to share with you. We'll be working on the cover and um, here I'm cutting the craft card stock that I chose to use for the base of my cover and you'll need to cut that to eight and a half by eight and seven eighths. I like to make it a little bit longer than the standard eight and a quarter by four and a quarter approximately, or four and a third, because I like it to extend a little bit past the pages, um, just so that I know all of my pages will be self-contained and not sticking out all over the place. It makes it yeah, a little little nicer that way, I think. So I'm using some handmade paper. I didn't hand make it, but it is handmade paper, and I've had it in my stash forever. And if you follow me or have seen my videos before, you know how I talk about everything in my stash is old. It's, you know, stuff I've had since I started doing mixed media and scrapbooking and anything with paper so a lot of my stuff I've had in my stash for about 15 or 20 years so this particular one has traveled with me um, through many different houses and I am so glad to finally be able to use this and find something really awesome that I like to use it with because it's just perfect perfect colors for deep sea mermaid theme and then this mermaid paper that I'm using, I believe was from Die Cuts with a View, and I think they actually do still have this um, paper pad out there, and I think it's fantasy something or another. I'm not really sure. Um, I can look it up, and I'll put that in the description box below for you guys. Um, when I do know um, something that uh, I know where it came from or that might still be out there, I will definitely let you know what those are and put those links down below so that you can find them if you want to use those. I really got frustrated trying to layer this all up and I went away from it for a minute and um, then I decided to layer some more, um, lots and lots of layers and put this cheesecloth in there and cut that up into little pieces. It just, it it took me a while to get to this point because I didn't feel like things were looking right. I did go away from it and kind of fussy cut around the upper portion of her body and hair and arm and that kind of kind of helped me out some to be able to have more of the other background pieces in. And here I'm just using my glue gun to temp, uh, well not really temporarily, but to hold those pieces of um, uh, cheesecloth in place while I work on the rest of it. So I'm not really gluing it to the background yet, um, but just getting those, those pieces of cheesecloth in place. And I have these um, self-adhesive gems in this pretty flourish pattern and I've never really worked with these before. I'm sure there's probably some trick or technique uh, to using them to get them, you know, down onto your paper into the shape that they're supposed to be, but I just kind of pulled it away and hoped for the best and laid it out and it seemed to work okay. Uh, the adhesive isn't super great on it and later on, um, I don't think I show it in this video, but I did end up gluing some of the pieces down because um, they didn't really stick too well. Then I went away from it for a little bit again and I sewed um, many layers of that handmade paper and uh, more cheesecloth, my little logo design there, and a piece of bleached twine, jute twine, to use for a closure. Because even though this is going to go in my traveler's notebook, I still like to have uh, a closure on it if possible. It just kind of, when I have several inserts in my notebook, it kind of helps just 
keep everything organized and if I don't necessarily want it open it's not flopping open to pages I don't want open right at a particular time. And then to add a little bit of color to those clear stones I pulled out my Copic markers and just dabbed a little bit of teal and turquoise here and there not over every gem because I still wanted some of the clear to show through but just here and there a little bit and then I also added some just kind of dabbing lightly onto the cheesecloth to give it a little bit of color as well. Now I'm adding on a few sequins because you can never have enough sparkle and I'm actually going to sew these on once I get them into place. Now you can use something maybe like glossy accents or glue dots or whatever you may have but um, I, I just I'm, I'm a sucker for details and I really love having things sewn on uh, just the extra little bit of texture it provides is fun. It's tedious, so it's not for everybody, but I do like to add that little bit of extra dimension to mine and sew things on. And then you can see how wonky it looks on the back, and none of that matters, of course, because nobody's ever going to see that. I just want to make sure that it's secure so my sequins won't fall off. And I'm going to glue that um, twine in place underneath where my mermaid will go. And then I think this is just about ready to be glued down. I add another little piece of cheesecloth there. I just love how that looks sticking out and the extra texture that it gives to it. And now I am gluing this down permanently to the cover. And that's the same, just gluing it some more in place. We're almost done here. So maybe another step or two. And there you can see just the light touches of color from the Copic marker. And then the last little thing I want to add to this is a little phrase there that says enchant and I've attached that sticker to um, a leftover piece of a craft envelope and I'm just making a little banner out of that. I hope you enjoyed this and stay tuned for the next portion in my Mermaid Traveler's Notebook process tutorials. Take care. Bye-bye.